Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is August 23rd of 2019. I'm going to talk a little bit about politics or about the news, and I hate to do it, but uh, when uh, something, I've been blogging since 1982, and every day I uh, talk about whatever's on my mind, whatever's happening, whatever's going on. If you checked in in the past, there would be uh, days or a week or whatever where I would be doing a, a grievance at work. I would show you the grievance. I would talk about it. I would tell you how he submitted it. I'd tell you what the outcome of it was. Uh, when I was, uh, when the wife uh, was divorcing me or whatever, or divorced me, I talked about that. Uh, so, because I had some people, back in the past there was a couple companies at least that reviewed blogs or whatever, and, and uh, they did it at different times. Both of them said the same thing. Man, this guy cannot pick, he can't pick colors, you know, for his blog site or whatever. He's not good at picking colors. Both of them said, too, uh, he says he's been doing this since 1982. Well, he doesn't know about this or know about that. So he, he's not telling the truth about that. And uh, then, like, I think one of them said, oh, all he talks about in the blog is his personal life or whatever. And then the other person, when they did the thing, was all he talks about is politics. So over the years, I've discussed everything. So I'm going to, today for a little bit, maybe I'll switch into something else. I want to talk a little bit about uh, politics or whatever. Uh, two things. One, this, my God, Trump is uh, just screwing with the system. And he doesn't, he, well, he, he doesn't appoint good people. All the people that he's appointed that I can think of are, my God. And they know before he was elected or when he was running or whatever, he said he was going to pick the very best people, the very best people. And he's picked the very worst people. Um, but now, you know, he's doing these things. And it looks like he's doing everything. What can I do to make sure that I get some people who are going to vote for me so I get reelected? And he's destroying these things out there. You know, he's like, oh, let's see. If I... Uh, do this or do that, that'll get me some votes. I actually think we're at the point, or he's at the point, where he's got all the votes that he's going to get. He's not going to get any new votes, no matter what he does. Uh, but what he doesn't understand or care about at all is when you're making these decisions about anything, if you're the president, let's say economics, let's say about you want to change uh, the financial relationship between the United States and China or something or other. You don't just get on Twitter, well, this guy does. You don't just get on Twitter and say, I'm going to do this. I'm putting a tariff, you know, on and I'm doing this or doing everything he says is incorrect. Everything he does, everything he says is a lie. Every day he lies constantly so but you just don't do that you you know you get you of course he doesn't have anybody competent around him you know you get these people together can i do such and such okay well you know you say i i that we can't do this and you say that we can do this and so okay bring me you know come prepared for a meeting bring your paperwork and then we'll find experts that when you say that this will work okay, then we'll call in the Secretary of the Treasury to bring in his experts and just on it, you know. And then you come up with a plan. You just don't watch Fox News and then, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning or whatever, you put out some pronouncement. You know, he just, he just ordered, uh, which he has no authority to do. But he just ordered businesses to uh, don't do business with China anymore. Uh, 
do business with our country. Don't do it, you know, he just, and he orders it, you know, this is, you know, this is order, you know, go out and just, oh. Now, the other thing which really upset me, and then we have, going to tie into what, you know, back when Obama was elected president, of course, the Republicans, it was a, it was hard to believe, you know, that members of Congress, Republican members of Congress got together and uh, they said, we're not going to cooperate with the president of the United States in any way. We're not going to give him any victories. For the next four years, we are not going to do anything. Well, they did try to repeal, I don't know, 30, over 30 times they tried to repeal Obamacare. Uh, but, you know, they they just announced, you know, they announced to the American people, we're going to do everything we can to make the president of the United States a total failure. You know, in other words, they were going to, and they did, they kept their way. And their, their goal was too, and they admitted it, you know, we want to make sure that he's a failed president and that he will not be reelected. So then four years of the Republicans positively not doing anything to cooperate and then he was reelected, and then they announced, you know, okay, we're going to make sure, you know, that uh, his, you know, that he's a failed president for the next four years. We're not going to, uh, not going to do anything, uh, you know, piss on the United States. Uh, we don't care if, if problems are solved or whatever. We're going to make sure that Obama is a failed president, that he has no accomplishments at all. And uh, then with about a year, I think he had about a year left to go, you know, in his last term, a opening became available on the United States Supreme Court. And right away, it doesn't do any good, by the way, to go to. Back then, I could uh, go to Red State. And sometimes you would... Uh, they were a hate site, but on the other hand, sometimes you could go there and they would actually, um, you could kind of see what they were thinking and uh, how they were, um, you know, and sometimes they would even, they'd say, okay, well, this isn't a good idea that, you know, the Republicans are doing, but at least it's not, you know, Hillary Clinton or whatever. But... Uh, after Trump got elected, this side has gone to be, there's no point for a liberal or for somebody trying to see both, both points of view to go there. They're, you know, they're batshit crazy. Uh, there is nothing there that's, uh, that is worthwhile at all. It's just all lies and, and uh, they don't see reality or they see reality and they don't care. But, um, but back then, I, I, uh, like I told you, a vacancy became available in the Supreme Court. And whenever that happens, when a, you know, the president has an opportunity, it's, it's a big deal for whoever the president, Ronald Reagan, Bush, or whatever, when a vacancy became, becomes available, it's sort of a big deal for your presidency because, you know, you're going to be out of office and uh, you won't be president any longer. But when you have the opportunity to appoint a justice to the United States Supreme Court, it's a big deal. And 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, you know, people will be saying, ah, justice so-and-so decided this case or whatever or whatever. And he was, you know, he was appointed by President so-and-so. Um, wow, what's this? Lakeland Senior High School. Teacher tells students if he were a school shooter, the body count would be a thousand. Oh my God. That just popped up on there. I'm going to have to check that. Maybe I won't check it out while you're watching, but I got to check that out. The... The teacher must be a gun enthusiast or something, and he must be 
indicating, yeah, I, you know, he knows what to do because he would use a 30 round clip or a 60 round. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to check that out. My God. You know, I kind of wish that I didn't watch the news. Um, wow. Um, where was it? Oh, anyway, so a vacancy became available on the United States Supreme Court. And I went to like, read, I checked a few other states, you know, uh, or a few other, you know, right wing sites to see what, what did they think? And they were right away. It was like, oh, Trump is, and I'm, or not Trump, uh, Obama. Now they didn't say this. I'm just trying to give you the feeling for the way these places are. I'm not quoting them exactly. It was like, oh, Obama, who's not even, you know, an American citizen. He's probably going to appoint some, uh, Zulu uh, tribesmen to be on the Supreme Court and we've got to stop him and you know it he's going to pick somebody that's going to be a communist and a whatever and I thought oh you know and then it was a very short period of time you know Ob Obama announced who he was going to uh, pick for the United States Supreme Court and I went back to these sites and they were they, these right-wing Republican sites and they said you know hey this this Supreme Court nominee you know he we could live with him uh, he is actually a good you know he's a, a good ch choice uh, we, we could actually live with this guy we, we you know we were worried that Obama was going to you know pick somebody that would just be terrible for us but this is not you know this is not a bad candidate. We can, you know, we can live with him. And then I don't know if it was like a few days later, the Republicans got together and, you know, they're in a caucus, you know, and decided what they were going to do in their position. And then they came out and they said, uh, I'm not quoting them exactly, but they came out and said, fuck the president of the United States. Fuck Obama. Um, we're not going to, uh, the Senate is not even going to hold hearings and uh, we're not going to approve a, his Supreme Court nominee, no matter who the Supreme Court nominee is. If Jesus Christ himself came down here and we're not going to approve anybody, we're going to wait until the next president is elected because we don't want Obama to have any, we don't want him picking a, a Supreme Court justice and we don't want him to be able to say that during my time I did this and did that and I got to appoint this great person, male or female, to the United States Supreme Court. And it was unheard of for the Supreme Court or for uh, a, a, president, a president's nominee not to have hearings and actually not to, you know you know not to be approved it was just unheard of and they just you know <laughs> fuck you obama now i thought at the time and i think a lot of other democrats thought well you know um hillary clinton will probably be you know i didn't want her though but Hillary Clinton or some Democrat, you know, Bernie Sanders or somebody is going to be probably, you know, the elected president. So this is terrible of the Republicans to do this. It's just such, so much hatred there and all that kind of stuff. But uh, so, of course, what happened was <laughs> Trump got elected. So Trump got to pick who he wanted and the Republicans in the Senate, you know, voted him right, you know, voted him right in. Uh, I don't see it here. It was here. Maybe I have to go to politics because, oh, I, I see it at the headline up here on top. Wait a minute. Here it is. Uh, she's been, 
she said she's a United States Supreme Court justice and a demo, you know, appointed by a Democrat and, and a liberal, she's liberal. And uh, I think she's had cancer about four times. She, Breaking news now on Supreme Court. Uh, she's been really, you know, really sick. She is uh, 86 years old. Because of the way the Republicans acted, I, I don't care. I think that uh, Justice Ginsburg, if she's not able to go to the Supreme Court, if she has to be at home, if she wants to uh, take a vacation to uh, the Bahamas or whatever, if she doesn't show up, fine. I hope that she does not submit her resignation. I hope that she uh, just takes good care of herself and just hangs in until the next election. And uh, now, of course, Trump would, would go, and the Republicans would go crazy, uh, you know, saying, well, she should, you know, she should resign or what, this is really unfair. And she's just hanging around waiting, you know, yeah, okay, back at you. I mean, it's, it's gotten to the point where, you know, to hell with, you know, there is no, I don't know, it's just, become toxic, a positively toxic atmosphere. atmosphere. Now, of course, Trump uh, would go crazy and he would be saying that, you know, I'm ordering her to, you know, to submit a resignation. I'm, you know, he'll be doing, of course, the people around him, even the people around him that are appointed by him who are not who are bad. I mean, even they're going to say, uh, President Bush, you, you can't. And he'll just be screaming and carrying on. He'll, he'll be tweeting that she, I don't know, he'll be, he'll come up, if he doesn't already have a name for her, he'll come up with some name and he'll just carry on and rave and rant that she should submit her resignation so he can appoint, you know, a replacement for her. And of course, he has absolutely, he is the president of the United States and he's in charge of the executive branch and the judicial branch. That's where the Supreme Court is. He has no authority. He has a zero authority over, over, over them. And, uh, but he'll carry on and, uh, so that's what I wanted to say. Now, there was something else I wanted to bring up. God, I spent oh, only 18 minutes. Seems to you listening to that, it's probably going to seem like, what was the other thing? Okay, I got to check out this thing, though. I... Oh, this uh, trade war, by the way, Trump is just... Uh, we may end up, this, this is not good. You, I think I already mentioned that. You, you got to handle these things. Yeah. You have to work things out. You have to make deals. You just can't listen to Fox News. And if they say something, um, another police officer killed. Illinois State Police Trooper dies after a shootout. Anyway, I gotta check this thing out. A teacher tells students, oh. <laughs> Florida, why did I, I should have known. A Florida teacher told students if he were a school shooter, he'd have a 1,000 person body count. A Florida high school teacher was placed on administrative leave after he told students he'd be the best school school shooter with a 1,000 person body count. The incident took place at Lakeland Senior High School about 45 minutes from Tampa on August 16th during a lockdown. It 
can't you 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 know you think it, it can't get Oops. I can't switch to the other camera because uh, on a setting over here, I've picked the thing. Uh, okay. Uh, the incident took place at about 45 minutes from Tampa on August 16th during a lockdown drill. Police interviewed 16 students about the incident. The teacher told the students that if he were a school shooter, he'd plant, oh my God, he'd plant improvised explosive devices, then fire a couple rounds and wait for everyone to hide, then press a button and boom, everyone would die. The teacher also said he would put a bomb in the corner and put nails in it for shrapnel. CNN is not naming the student because he's not been charged. Well, I, you know, I don't think he should be charged with anything. Um, he should be fired, and he should never be a teacher ever again. But I, it, I, it, I don't think he, I don't think he was making a terrorist threat. I think he was just saying, "Yeah, look here." The teacher told police he was a former U.S. Marine, and that his statements were a joke. Oh. And they searched his vehicle. Okay, I, I don't think, I don't, you know. The teacher has no criminal history, but a temporary ex parte risk protection order said the teacher may be seriously mentally ill or may have recurring mental health issues. Oh, okay, so... Uh, I still think he should be fired, but, uh, you know, he should get medical treatment for whatever type of problem he has. Maybe he's, I don't know, he was in the Marine Corps, maybe he has post-traumatic stress disorder. If so, if that's the problem, I feel sorry for him, but he should not be a teacher ever, and he should get treatment if he needs treatment, so... So that's it. Uh, you know, I I worked at a hospital for five and a half years, and I was, uh, in addition to being a supervisor on one of the shifts, and usually whenever the director of security left the hospital for vacation or illness or whatever. Uh, he had me take as being active, you know, director of security. I was also the departmental training officer, and uh, I was like the far, fire marshal. I didn't have that title, but I was the, like the fire marshal of the hospital also. And I was involved in meetings with uh, drawing up different kinds of procedures and that kind of stuff or whatever. And, you know, like for bomb threats, which weren't as, you know, this was back in the 1980s, late 70s, 80s or whatever. So, you know, we weren't as concerned. We weren't thinking about so much terrorism and uh, that type of stuff. But one of the, you know, the things we had to think about and I had to think about was, you know, if there is a... Uh, bomb threat or whatever, when people exit the hospital, we had to be concerned about security or whatever because, you know, somebody might watch to see how our bomb, proce or, uh, bomb procedures work or whatever to see where people go and then people might attack that area. You have to take in a lot, you know, there's a lot of things you had to take in to consideration and you had to think, you know, about, but my God, this, uh, this teacher here, you know, telling the students that, yeah, he, there again, if, that's something too, I've, I was not in the military, never been in the military, but I blogged repeatedly over the past forever, but, 
the cost when they're figuring, you know, like a war, when we're figuring a conflict that we're going into, it's not just X amount of money, you know, it's not just X amount of equipment is going to be destroyed or used up or whatever. The manpower, the people that are serving the military, we've got to think, you know, what kind of problems are they, are they going to be around spent uranium, you know, powder or something? Are they going to have, you know, lose hearing because of, you know, the gunfire? Are they going to have, are they going to have, are they going to have, you know, disabilities and wounds, lose legs? And are they going to have, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and all that kind of stuff? And when we're deciding whether we want to go to into a conflict and whatever we figure that's going to cost, let's say, I don't know, I'm just going to make a number up. Let's say we're going to decide that's, that's going to cost $25 billion. Okay. They may have budgeted in there some med, you know, money for medical and uh, whatever, but what they need to do is realistically come up with, okay, these people who lost a leg, lost an eye, lost, you know, whatever, and people who have, you know, they have to be taken care of. We positively have to take care of them for the rest of their lives if they have, you know, a disability, uh, you know, medical care, psychiatric care, everything that we can do for them. They you know, voluntarily now, you know, joined the military. They put themselves in harm's way. They did their job. And f for whatever reason, they, they ended up being a casualty of some, you know, some sort. And they have to be taken care of. That's a cost of, and that's one reason the Bush administration or whatever, the second Bush, when they put us into, you know, Iraq, and I was blogging about, you know, no way should we go in there, and telling you reasons, you know, in my blog, of course, I mean, nobody was reading my blog, basically, but I still put it, you know, put it out there, that, uh, you know, the Bush and the administration said, it's not going to cost any money, because, uh, you know, we're going to take the oil revenues and that will, so there'll be no expense to the American people. I knew that was bullshit and I blogged that it was bullshit. And, and I also blogged that, you know, if we're going to go into conflict, which I don't want to, and I explained, you know, we shouldn't be going in. I forget how many we went in with. We we're going to go in with 50,000 or whatever it was. I said, you know, if we're going to go in there, we need to go in with 500, 400 or 500,000 troops. And we don't have that many, you know, so we would have to get, work out something with Turkey or somebody else to, to go in there also, you know, with us. And what we need to do is reinstate, you know, institute the draft, which of course nobody wants. Congress wouldn't want to vote for it. The president wouldn't want it. We need to reinstitute the draft. We need to pass a tax on all the American people, pass a tax, which nobody wants to tax, you know, and that's going to be the war tax. That's going to be whatever it is, is going to have to be paid back by the American people, you know. And I, you know, because I knew, of course, that there's no way that, but anyway, that we went into, you know, went into Iraq. Um, NRA is having a hell of a time. I guess they just lost three more lawyers. It's been a mess. I used to be a member of the National Rifle Association back in the early days. And when they started the craziness, which was back a long time ago, uh, I bailed out on them. I missed the uh, American Rifleman, their magazine, but they just went... Uh, I, I discussed that, so I'm not going to go into that again. Well, I'm sure for you this seems like one hell of a long video, but it's only been 30-minute video. 
I'm not going to monetize this, of course, because uh, no advertiser would want to advertise where you have somebody giving his opinion of the uh, President of the United States, whether it's, you know, negative or positive, because then you got half of the other audience, you know, no matter who, if I were, I just was expressing my opinion that, you know, Donald Trump should not be president of the United States, and he has, he's lacking in mental capacity, he has mental illness problems, and he's incompetent. Maybe that's already covered by my other points. But if I were sitting here talking about how great Trump was and how he was going to make America great again, and and uh, all that type of stuff. If I did that for 30 minutes, I would still <laughs> demonetize, demonetize this because there'd be, you know, half of the people also, no matter which position you take, who would disagree with you. So anyway, I'm not going to make any money off this video. Not that I make any money anyway. I've been doing this since 2005. And uh, I take in about $20 a month from, you know, YouTube. And, uh, you know, I spend more than that, you know, purchasing a camera or uh, hardware or software or whatever I do. So I'm not sure how much exactly I would have to clear each month in order to actually come out ahead a little bit but I know twenty dollars doesn't cover it I was up there to a while I think for like thirty thirty two dollars but you know it's it's dropped not just for me but for a lot of people it's dropping down the way YouTube is pushing out videos and doing stuff like that anyway um, what Biden poses hypothetical question about an Obama assassination. Whoa, what, come on, what's... During a town hall meeting, former Vice President Joe Biden asked a New Hampshire audience to imagine what it would have been like if Barack Obama had been assassinated when he became the Democratic nominee for the president in 2008 and how it would have affected the country. The scenario came as Biden discussed the impact that the 1968 assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy had on his own life and how that had prompted him to run for office. My two political heroes were, you know, Martin Luther King and Bobby King. Ah, okay, I, you know, Joe Biden would make an excellent president, except I'm kind of concerned about his age, but he would make an excellent president, but come on, uh, you don't even want to mention, if you're a politician running for office or anything, you don't want to mention, you know, a what if assassination, you know, scenario, you, there's certain things you just have to have a filter on. Now, I don't have that filter, but then I'm not running for political, you know. When something pops in my mind, it, you know, comes out here. But come on. Uh, come on, just, uh, come on, Joe Biden. Uh, he's just a sort of a common guy in a way, well, you know, He's been, you know, senator and vice president and all that type of stuff. So I guess he's not a common person, but don't mention, you know, don't mention bombings. Don't mention assassinations. Don't, uh, now, of course, <laughs> of course, we have a president who just the other day before a group of, in fact, there, I guess there was a uh, recipient of the uh, Medal of Honor there. And Trump, you know, is, oh, congratulations to him, or, you know, hey, he's here, 
you know, showing that he has somebody in the audience that's supporting him or whatever. And, uh, but then he says, you know, I think I should have got, you know, a Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, I, 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 I wonder if I could appoint, you know, give myself one. And then he kind of laughs. And, and of course, his supporters go, oh, he was joking. It was, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't think that if you're the president of the United States who, along, you know, on the Congress decides and, and then the president, you know, gives the Congressional Medal of Honor and all that type of, you just shouldn't be doing something that in a way uh, denigrates. I mean, it should be, the, this person is a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. My God, you know. Thank you, you know, whatever. You shouldn't be joking that you're going to give yourself one. Now, President Harry Truman, who was a captain in World War I, and, uh, you know, then became vice president and then president of, what well, became senator, vice president, and then president of the United States when, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt died when one time when Harry Truman was, you know, awarding a Congressional Medal of Honor to a uh, to a man, he said to him, you know, as he was doing it, he says, you know, congratulations, all that kind of stuff. He said, I would rather re have I would rather re receive the you know, Congressional Medal of Honor than being President of the United States. Now that, that was a good thing. That was a classy thing. He wasn't, he was saying, you know, hey, I'm giving you the Congressional Medal of Honor. I'm the President of the United States. I consider, you know, the Congressional Medal of Honor, you know, I would rather have that than be President of the, you know, have them People say that I was president of the United States, and you have to remember that uh, President Truman accomplished, you know, the Truman Plan, the uh, oh, uh, Marshall Plan, all types of. I mean, he he did a lot, and he's considered one of. Uh, top five or six presidents of the United States. He, you know, he never graduated uh, college. I'm not even sure. I don't think he even, I don't think he even attended college. But anyway, uh, it doesn't matter whether you give me thumbs up or not. Give me thumbs up if you want to. Uh, I guess there's a link below to, I guess I'll put a link below to my Amazon page. If you click on that, if you're going to buy something, especially if you're going to buy something expensive or whatever, click on my link. And then when you go to Amazon, when you're there, you don't have to buy any of the things I recommend. But when you're there, then you've logged in, then go and buy big screen TV, computer, or anything. And then I'll get uh, a little commission. Uh, last month, I think it was, well, wait a minute. Let's not just, let's just go to Amazon. Okay. Go to earnings. You're going to wonder how I spend all this money. How does Jim make all this money from Amazon? And then... He is probably a rich man. Let's go up here to uh, payment history. How much do you think I earned last month? Uh, let's see. I earned a dollar and uh, 74 cents. And uh, they don't pay you until you get uh, $10. So I'm not going to get anything this month. And you can look down here. The red amounts are amounts that uh, I was actually paid. 
So, 1165, 2088, 1307, 4598. So, anyway, if you can click on that link, maybe we could get that up to something where I could actually, uh, actually buy something. And that's the problem with me is I'm always buying something to make the videos better or uh, or whatever. Sorry about the video. I have a camera set up here and then I have this one and I intended, but on my settings, let me drag this over here and you can see the uh, control thing. I'm using Movidia Video Suite to record the screen. You can see that the microphone's working. But you can see here where it says webcam. What happened is I forgot to unselect that. And so uh, I couldn't switch to it. You know what? I think this may actually be underneath or on top of. Because I can't tell. That may actually be up here. So I'm not sure. We'll find out when I upload this video. Thank you very much for watching.